Secret Invasion is finally over, and it seems to me like everything, or almost everything, that has come out on Disney Plus that is Marvel-related has been an absolute disaster for Disney. It has done damage to the MCU in some way, shape, or form. You can look at Loki. I know a lot of people liked Loki, but you cannot expect me to believe that the Loki that they pulled from that point in the timeline into the Loki TV series would have believed a single solitary word that anyone would have told him that, oh, you became a good guy, so I'm going to cry. That's horseshit. This latest iteration of MCU debacle of Secret Invasion, it destroyed Nick Fury's character. I was hoping going into this series that, well, it's Samuel L. Jackson, and they're surely not going, surely Samuel L. Jackson is not going to let them break down and utterly disgrace and embarrass his own character, but here we are. This first article, I'm going to go over a couple of them because they're just so much fun. In this article from Screen Rant, why Marvel's $200 million secret invasion broke the MCU's lowest Rotten Tomato ratings record. Now, Rotten Tomatoes is not exactly the epitome of uh, bars of rating scores, when it, especially when it comes to Marvel products. But we tend to try to use it uh, to see how the audience feels, because it's getting to the point where comments and likes and dislikes, especially the dislikes, are disabled on the YouTube video, so they find a way, uh, the audience finds a way to voice their displeasure, and that's usually with that trusty downvote. MCU's adaptation, terrible adaptation of Secret Invasion, had huge potential, but it was flushed down the toilet by Disney+, Plus. Uh, made bad decisions to underm and undermines Nick Fury's big opportunity. You, you got that right. Now, if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed Secret Invasion, tell me, what did you enjoy about it? What was so good about this series? What was good about taking Samuel L. Jackson's character and spending all six episodes, not missing one opportunity per episode, to talk about how old he is, how he needs to be put in mothballs, how the blip changed him, and he ran away from Earth, ran away from his wife on Earth, who was a scroll. Spoiler alert, if you even care. A storyline, a story arc that in Secret Evasion that served absolutely no purpose other than to show that Nick Fury was a bad husband and ran away, abandoned his wife. In case you missed it, that's what he did. That was a discussion in it. I had some hope that maybe, just maybe, by the end of the series, they would go on some sort of, I don't know, redemption arc. But no. After the third episode and the speech that Talos gave to Nick Fury in the car, that Nick Fury would be absolutely nothing without the Skrulls, you cannot, there is no redemption from that. And then come the end, I saw one article that said, oh, it was the best redemption for Nick Fury in the big fight at the end, even though, again, spoilers if you care, it was Gaia who fought Gravix in the end, not Nick Fury. The only thing Nick Fury did was barely save the president, and that was with the help of a character I can't remember her name. Oh, well. This series, just like many of the other ones, totally screws up the timeline, screws up the characters, disrespects them. I don't know where the MCU goes from here, especially with the Super Scroll of Gaia, played by Amelia Clark. She is the biggest, the baddest, the most powerful creature. I can't call her... Can you genuinely call her a hero? She's not necessarily a villain because she did beat Gravix in the end, but can you actually call her a hero? She wants a home for her family, for her, the other Skrulls who now have bounties on their head thanks to the end of Secret Invasion, but let's see what Screen Rant thinks. Secret Invasion's finale was rushed and doesn't matter. That is mm, probably true. Secret Invasion came across as a movie probably close to a two-hour movie, that was broken down into six episodes and added with a bunch of fluff. Much, you know, fluff like the marriage that 
Nick Fury had. A pointless, pointless story that could have been taken out had huge potential. Yes, every fan of Marvel Comics knew. Secret Invasion had huge potential that they just flushed down the toilet. They did not have the stakes. Maybe, uh, no. Should have been bigger. Should have been left to a movie more than likely. Plot holes? Oh, let's see what this part has to say. Secret Invasion was sold on the idea that it would be a smaller scale, claustrophobic story smaller scale claustrophobic story. No, it was a worldwide story because the Skrulls, Gravix, was trying to start World War III between Russia and the United States. So I don't know how much of a smaller scale, I guess compared to the multiverse of madness where the entire multiverse is at stake. Sure, that's a smaller scale. Uh, closer in genetics to Winter Soldier uh, than, than to the Avengers. It was supposed to be intrinsically, what? Intricately. Wow, I don't know how to read. I'm sorry, that's a stupid pause there. It was supposed to be an intricately woven narrative, clever and provocative. It wasn't. And looking at it now, the issues in its plotting are impossible to look past. Despite being a compelling idea on paper, Gravix plan to take over Earth is illogical. It's so surprising that more and more articles are coming out. More and more of these websites are actually turning their back on Disney. They're going after them. They're calling them out calling the Disney stories, the Marvel stories, whether and even the Lucasfilm movie, Indiana Jones, calling it out for the pretty much, you know, D-tier writing that it is. And yet, the writers want more money. Hmm. Interesting. Where was I? Yep. Do -do 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 -do. Let's see. The plot also hurdles forward from one twist or cliffhanger to the next, resolving them week to week in a way that's theoretically good for whipping up excitement, but feels hollow when it comes to rewatching. Why would you want to rewatch any of this stuff? The bar and bar one twist, everything's just a bit obvious. Of course it was. Rhodey being a scroll spy, that was rel pretty obvious. Mostly because it's the only character in the show that would have made sense to be a scroll. The way he was acting, his behavior, his warmongering attitude that, you know, even before, I believe that was after uh, it was revealed that he was a Skrull. Hmm. Positioning Nick Fury at the heart of the story was smart. Yes, but they ruined his character. Let's move. Let's see. Anything else? Secret Invasion is overshadowed by its own Avengers problem. This right here, this little screen right here having all the DNA of all the Avengers from Endgame, from the big fight with Thanos, having it in a little vial, and we're just going to give it over to Gravix. Sure, Gravix died. Don't know how, because with the serum, he was able to regenerate any and all issues. So why did one bolt to the chest kill him? He could have easily regenerated from that. And if that were the case, if you wanted to avoid that, why didn't Gaia just... Incinerate, incinerate him into ash. I didn't understand that one little part. Like, he has a hole in his chest. You healed, Gaia healed from a bullet to the chest. If you know it's a possibility, incinerate the body. Make sure there's nothing he can regenerate from. Oh. Lowest Rotten Tomatoes record rating. See, in this article from IGN, they're going after Disney. They're going after Marvel. Invasion just ruined Nick Fury's first leading role in the MCU. Oh, no spoilers. Let's see. Now that the sixth and final episode is of Marvel Studios Secret Invasion is available on Disney+, Plus. it's fair to say that we should stop talking about superhero movie fatigue and focus on what may be the real problem. Marvel's creative funk. Oh, my goodness. You think maybe if we could get some better writing, people would still be interested in going to the show. It's a mix of both, I believe. Let's see. Taking an Uru hammer to the greatest spy master's legacy. Shows seem to craft scenes in every episode meant to chip away at the Fury character and erase his image as the ultimate secret agent. Said this from the very first one. Numerous people said it from the first one. But like I said earlier in the video, it was possible. It would have been far more interesting to send him on a redemption arc where he proves that no he's still nick fury but absolutely not we can't have that we have to go on a nice little speech 
and talk about how the scrolls helped him get where he was. He would not be the greatest secret agent without the scrolls. And in the end, it's actually Amelia Clark's character of Gaia that saves, that ultimately saves the day. Nick Fury needed help to stop the president, to stop them launching nukes against Russia. And that whole scene right there, ah, didn't make much sense. But Amelia Clark came out and talked about becoming a Marvel superhero. I do kind of wonder. She had fun. She had a blast, which I don't blame her. Part of the fight where she was on a stunt chariot, uh, doing all the running, but wasn't actually running. She talks about how much it was fun. Best day ever. Now, I can't blame her. Absolutely cannot blame her because, you know, flying around, being a superhero, getting to do all that stuff, that sounds like loads of fun. But I am curious. Her character, Gaia, legitimately or illegitimately, is now the most powerful being in the MCU. Now, whatever, wherever you want us to call it, the MCU and girl power and all this other stuff, it was Kevin Foggy's decision to do all of this stuff. Regardless, male or female, her character is the end-all, be-all, greatest being, most powerful being, cannot be stopped in the MCU, MCU, whatever. Where do they go from here? What's the next step? It's a legitimate question. How can you have any sort of surface level like neighborhood problem, one problem in a state, in one country, or whatever? How can you have a problem that she cannot solve? It was bad enough with, Miss, with Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, which we're going to get three Marvels in the movie in November. Please, Disney, don't delay it. Please don't. We need to show what kind of a debacle that is. Hey, you know what? It could be fantastic. It could make a billion dollars like Barbie's going to make. That's a, We are in a bizarre timeline right now, but that's, an, that's for another video. Where on earth does the MCU go from here? We have one TV series after another, disrespecting, ruining characters like Loki, honestly, like Wanda Maximoff. They totally screwed up her character and then gave her... A quasi sort of dimension, quasi sort of dimension. No, redemption arc that wasn't earned after slaughtering hundreds of people. But is she dead? Of course she's not dead. If you think she's dead, you're foolish. Loki, Nick Fury, who else? Oh, um, Hawkeye. I think he's retiring from the MCU though. But no, like I was saying. Where does it go? How do you have any sort of problem when you have a being this powerful? Oh, I'm glad she had fun. Honestly, I don't... I'd be surprised if we actually ever see her character ever again in a movie because she's too powerful. The scale has gone up... The power scale has gone up so much, I don't see... I don't see how she could be used in any sort of surface-level conflict, but... Whatever. Let me know what you think in the comments. What did, did you watch the abomination that was Secret Invasion? Did you like it? If you did, please tell me something in the comments. Please. I want to know what was so good about the show. And don't tell me just t what was good about it. Please let me know. But let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like. Leave a dislike. <laughs> I appreciate you making it this far. Let's get me to 1,000 subscribers. I hope to see you on the next one.